Welcome to Positive Talk Radio. We're glad you're here. I'm Kevin McDonald, your host for this grand adventure, and I thank you for joining us. You see, our mission is to create a positive personal connection to all things with courage and love. We invite terrific guests, interesting topics, and great conversation, all in a fun, entertaining way. And we always manage to learn something, too. So I hope you will stay right where you are for this episode of Positive Talk Radio. I was so busy enjoying the opening that I forgot to bring you back, Tommy. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I was wondering what happened. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, was having was having too fine, fine of a time. This is an unusual show because we are doing both positive talk and we are also doing uh, think energy because um well, first of all, I got I got to say, uh, Tommy Tika is with us. He is a singer songwriter of note. He, we're going to play a couple of his songs during the course of this hour, and we're also going to talk about some of the influences that he has and where he gets some of his music from. Which why he's on uh, um, Think Energy because he's got some he's got some stories to tell, and uh, I'm excited about I'm excited about that. And uh, also, you know. I got to ask you, first of all, being a uh, singer songwriter of note, um, performing in front of a lot of people, selling great music and the songs that you've written. And uh, when we talked earlier today, you were also being a short order cook. And that, that- <laughs> yeah, I was cooking for my kids. <clears throat> all six yeah. Them. All six of them. Yeah. That's what that's. I'm the cook of the house. That's what I do. You know, and and, and um, like I already said, you know, it's like. When we do chicken, we do two ki- two kilos of it, you know, and and, and um, when it, they that's eat, what what is that like four pounds? I think, yeah, yeah. Well, when kids when kids eat, they gotta eat. And yeah, and these boys. ones do. <laughs> teenage teenage boys are are something, and that's that's true. I'm so, now Kayla is uh has listened to the show before and i'm just speaking of which now you don't have thanksgiving over there do you no but we'll uh no no Finns don't celebrate it but i mean obviously me having not just grown up but lived extensively in the states i um we do celebrate it i speak english to the kids and um but we don't you know that was yesterday right right, right. and so because the world doesn't stop here no, you know everybody's got to get up and go to work at you know six o'clock in the morning, oh. and so it, you you know have a great Thanksgiving dinner, a little like five bottles of wine. You, you ain't going anywhere, you know. And so, so um, we're just kind of you know um, doing it tomorrow. Ah, very cool. Yeah, you know, just I want to introduce uh, the, the tra- traditional foods and uh, to the kids, and so that they kind of know what it's all about, because you you don't get that here at all, and. Um, you know, the older ones obviously already know and remember, but then the four-year-old doesn't understand anything. He's just, you know, I talked about the Indians and the uh, Native Americans and the pilgrims, and he doesn't have any idea what's going on. He's just like, they looked at me with these huge eyes, like, they're not going to eat me, are they? I'm like, no, that's not what Thanksgiving is about. You know, it's a nice, friendly holiday. <laughs> oh, yeah. And now you're going to do a turkey tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I will. I awesome, will. awesome. Yeah. I, now, you don't put stuffing in the bird, do you? Um. Uh, well, not tomorrow. No, because I'm, I'm not going to make the whole big. I, I. I mean, obviously, I've cooked it that way, you know, way back when. But, um, they're. I'm kind of the two two older ones. They eat a lot. Um, and, and you know, we'd probably be able to, you know, kill the bird if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But then, then, you know, for whatever leftover or whatever leftovers we're going to have, the, the older kids are going to go back to their mom on Sunday <laughs> and there's only so much turkey one can eat, you know? <laughs> and so I don't want to be eating turkey the whole next week because this, yeah. you know, if I was really doing it, because the, the, it's so rare here, these, they have these huge birds. 
And um and and, and just for me to cook one of those would, would be eating that on Wednesday still. You know, <laughs> it's like Thanksgiving never ends. You know, Christmas is canceled. Right? You know? I just say that we're, still we're, eating the same turkey. Right? That's right. But now you guys, do you have Black Friday? Which is what today? Is. Yeah, we, we yeah we do nowadays. It I mean these are all things that when I was a kid and we you know, uh, they didn't exist in Finland at all. I mean obviously, we whenever we came over here, um, for holiday and we just talk about Black Friday, nobody had any idea what that was. But you know, in the course of twenty five some thirty years, um, all of these things have now found their way here. But they're not really traditional things. And so people, like for example, Halloween, people do celebrate it here, but they celebrate it wrong because it's kind of like it's it's imported, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. And only part and only parts of it, right? We actually the um Finns do Halloween type of stuff at Easter. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Kids go trick-or-treating then. That's interesting. Why? Yeah, but that's a, I don't know. It but it's it's a pagan feast, you see. Um oh. and even though this is a obviously it's a Christian country, but but um some traditions go beyond that. And so kids dress up as witches. You know, it you don't it, the costumes are all, always going to be just witches and demons. Cuz you know, those were the um things that the uh, ancient Finns would either be scared of or kind of worship in a in a very odd way and and then they go behind people's doors and and uh basically tell them that um they'll put a spell on folks if they don't give them candy <laughs> you know uh <laughs> it's a, a very friendly yeah. you know it's just like people disappear but you know we can <laughs> we can we can contain this, you know. <laughs> it's all right. You know, everybody is different, and and the history of uh, of that country goes way. I mean, we're 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 talking the United States like three hundred years. You're talking thousands of years. Of yeah, years. yeah. In Europe, you always get that. It's kind of weird when you go to Paris, and the, you know, if you take a tour, somebody's going to say this hospital dates back to, you know, um, twelve hundred. You know, or you know, something's 1,000 years old, and, and you're looking at the hospital, I think, like, what, you know? Because uh, even in Finland, you don't, you know, it's got some buildings 500 years, 600 years old, but you go to France and south of Europe, and, you you know, it, man, I mean, it's just, it's, it, you go to the Colosseum, <laughs> which is a spectacular place, by the way, and yeah. and you, you get this sense of, of, of how long ago, you know, these things happened and they're still you know all these buildings they're still standing in ruins some of them granite but they're still there it's it's, it's really is amazing by the way how far is finland from england um it's like uh it's really difficult I'm, I'm very bad at geography to be honest with you but if you get on a plane it's two and a half hours oh so you but you could it's drive like two and a half three hours yeah by plane it's you could actually drive that. See, my my son. Yeah, is... I mean, you you basically um um you the well Finland's kind of you can drive there, but uh, what you'd probably do if you went by car is like you take a ferry to um to Germany and then drive from Germany to France and then take the channel. You uh... know the the train right the, the the train that you know. The, uh, and 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 uh, go under the uh, English Channel and and, and just and yeah. then go to England. Yeah, but that would obviously a couple of days on or one one night on the ferry, a uh, couple of days driving to France or to to the port. And... Well, and the other thing is, I'm uh, my son. The reason I bring that up is my son uh, is in the Air Force and uh, he's just been transferred to England. So there. Okay. Will be there will be a time and it's just like an hour south of London is where he'll be. And there'll be a time when I have to go over there to visit him. And I was just kind of curious how, how long that would, how long that would take to go from, you know, to get up to where you are. Cause that would be, that would be fun to meet you up there. And uh, of course, yeah, I have, it'd be awesome. Yeah. I have to go to Liverpool and, and, and oh all man. That. Yeah. 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 You do have to do all that. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and hey, who knows? Maybe maybe I'll meet you in France. 
Hey, there you go. We can have a bottle yeah. of wine or two. Oh yeah, like yeah, or two. You know, the, you know, a, a few bottles of wine. The definition of few being zero to ninety nine. You know, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> exactly. We can have a six pack of wine. No, wait. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> this is wrong. Wrong. Wrong thing yeah. there. Uh, but but you know um, Germany's got some great beers and France has got some great wine, so we can. Oh and, uh, yeah, it's, and they're right next to each other. So yeah, they so, are very good. Now the last time we talked, and I wanted, I'm glad Kayla May is uh, listening because she is uh, one of my uh, psychic friends, and she's going. Oh to, cool. She's at one point going to be <laughs> on Think Energy. As a matter of fact, uh, we have a gal by the name of. Um, Mary Beckman, who's going to be on at one o'clock today, who is an extraordinary psychic medium. And we're going to talk to her about her new books and what she's got going on. But you have to tell the story of one of the songs you wrote and, and uh, the, uh, the night that you saw, the night that you saw your dad. This is the, and ladies and gentlemen, you need to stay tuned with us. This is really cool. Well, yeah, it was it was actually one of the weirdest experiences of my life, and uh, what it ended up being one of the scariest as well. Um, like I already mentioned, I mean, my 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 grandma when I was growing up was very religious, but she was also very superstitious and um, talked about demons and witchcraft and having having you know being being partially gypsy. Um, I. <clears throat> Yeah. So anyway, that's th that's how the whole album. This is my happy face. Actually, it's that's the story behind the album. Um, so, anyways, my dad passed passed away a couple of years ago, and um, we had a very good relationship, but we were very much alike and and fought a lot at one point, especially when I was in my late teens. And so there was all sorts of uh, unresolved, basically unresolved crap when he died. And um, we never really got to truly talk about a lot of the issues because he he got diagnosed with cancer and the cancer went away and it was supposed to all be great, but then it came back and just took him just like that. Okay. And so there was no, yeah, and so it was awful and there was no time really to accept, you know, that to say I love yous and all those things. And it was particularly bad for me because I felt that I, I, I should have reached out, you know, when he was still here. And about six months after he had passed, um, I I had a dream where like, I usually wake up in the middle of the night because one of the kids are going to wake wake me up or I get up and get a drink or go to the bathroom, whatever. I really don't usually even sleep through the whole night, only a couple of times a year. So this felt very real. So I, I get up. Um, and decide that you know i'm thirsty and i'm head, heading to the kitchen and um as i'm going to the kitchen the way my house is said you have to go through the living room and i'm walking I'm, I'm approaching the living room and i notice that there's somebody sitting on the couch and it's my dad and he signals me to you know come over and then kind of stands up and you know and just says hi tom and you know just sit down and i sit down and we start talking about um stuff you know first we talked about you know uh, how sick he had been and oddly enough we talked about his death which is which was weird because uh, at that point you know i i, I kind of realized it's a dream mm -hmm. but um we continue and then talk talked a lot of a lot about my childhood and and he used to have this habit of smoking inside. We all of us hated that, you know, because we really didn't want his cigarettes around, especially on Friday night. It's cold in Finland; you can't even have the windows open. And this guy was smoking like a chimney, you know. And, and we hated the cigarette smoke. And and um, we always, uh, well, in lack of a better term, you know, bitched about that. And my dad would always say that you guys are terrorists. You know? <laughs> I'm not putting, you know, I'm smoking. That's the end of it. And uh, and that was just one of the, you know, not not an issue, but there were issues that I don't want to get into here, but serious issues right. between us. And we we talked and talked. It felt like hours, and, and really got closure on a lot of these things. And he explained um why he had behaved the way he had be behaved and i sort of apologized and explained that you know this is this is why this sort of particular thing was very difficult for me and 
and um, kind of joked around as we always did, had a laugh. Um, he listened to music even, you know, which definitely means it was a dream because the, because the entire family would have been up. Um, and then all of a sudden he said that, uh, Tom, I don't have time to explain, but you've got to, you got to wake up. And I said, I got to go. I said, yeah, you got to go. Um, and he's smoking his word, but you know, I didn't say anything cause I was just so happy talking to him and, and it's just like, yeah, you got to go and you got to go now come here. And, and we, we stood up, we hugged and, um, he's, you know, cause he was hugging him. His secret touched my, uh, my neck round about here. And it burned and, and hurt, but I didn't say anything. And he, he apologized, you know, and I said, you know, it really doesn't matter. It's true. I hate your cigarettes, but uh, the, all that matters is that we got, got, got to have this time together. And I just, you know, went back to bed, never got that drink, by the way, that I, <laughs> I was going to get a yeah, drink of water and um, went back to bed, fell asleep. And I woke up, woke up in the morning and, you know, I even um, just, as I got up, got out of bed, I always get up first. My wife stayed in bed and I told her, she said, like, good morning. And I said, you know, I had the weirdest dream. My dad was in the dream. That, man. And uh, went to the kitchen, started preparing breakfast, you know, fed the kids, what have you. And, and right before we went, I thought that, you know, I better go look in the mirror and see that I, I, don't, I don't look hideous. Because, you know, taking the kids to the daycare, right? And... Um, I looked in the mirror and I saw a red spot right, right about here, you know, exactly where his cigarette had touched. And I'm like, what the, you know, and, you know, doing this and, <laughs> and, and touching it. And you could tell that there's a, who's ever had a cigarette burn knows exactly what they feel like. And it, it sure felt like that. I stood there for the longest time looking in the mirror, just trying to wrap my head around the fact that, when I went to bed the night before, I didn't have that. Then I had the dream. I wake up in the morning. It's there. I mean, obviously, it is possible that I've just... It, it, people do weird things in their sleep. And I'm sure there's always a logical explanation for everything. But it really, really kind of rattled me a bit, to be honest with you. Um, very difficult. Um, to. It was very difficult to go to bed that, that night thinking that, you know, that happened last night. What, what's going to happen now? Who am I going to meet? You know, because even though it was great, if 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 you get a sense of the fact that there's something else out there, you know, that this reality that we perceive to be the only real reality, if there is a counter one um, or parallel one, spirit world where you can enter in your dreams or if it just just the thought of it being there, that was very difficult. Not after a while, I started reading about it, you know, about these dreams and people having these dreams. Started watching documentaries. There was a particular series on Netflix that was about life after death, and and um, watched it. Um, kind of devoured it, to be honest with you. And um, well, then little by little, um, I I uh, <laughs> you know I was I was talking about we were we knew Michael and I, my label head that I was going to make a solo album and, 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 you know, I was thinking about what songs would be in, you know, on that album and, 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 and what the point behind it would be. And he said that, you know, that dream you told me about that, how about if we just sort of, how about if you go down that road that, that cause it's very interesting that, that, you know, we'll, I had a song called bullet in the head and he said that we'll start with that and that can be, you know, what if that's the uh, the start of the album and that's the suicide of the protagonist and we'll just take it from there. And uh, so that's how the album was born. And and um, obviously very part of the album, but I keep going back to the dream, every, you know, not just every once in a while, but on a regular basis. It was eerie. There was something unsettling about the whole thing. I can't explain. It wasn't exactly, my dad was very normal. And I felt very safe with him. But there was something in that moment, the way the room looked and, and just, it, it just felt strange. And, and, and it felt like, especially when he started saying that you got to go, but you got to wake up. It, that was, I never got an explanation as to why, what was happening, what would have happened if I had not. And uh, it's the dream has, it, nothing like that. I haven't, there, there hasn't been another dream.
Okay, it's just that was just one off. But I've always, always felt every once in a while, you know, growing up, I've always, um, I don't know if it's my grandma's influence, but I, I get these feelings that I sense stuff. I see stuff out of the corner of my eye and then, you know, some movement. Every once in a while, I've throughout my entire life, I've heard somebody call my name. And I ask everybody who's present that did somebody call my name? And everyone's like, no. Could be they're messing with me, obviously. But I very much doubt that because it's been a reoccurring thing. Mm -hmm. And and, um, and my grandma always claimed that she can sense these things. Um, I haven't really, you know, this is the part that I really don't t think about a lot because this is the part that scares the hell out of me. <laughs> um, but But I've always... It, it's a really weird sensation when you go somewhere and you feel that there's something unsettling on, and sometimes you feel that there's something, everything's fine, but, but yeah, that was, that was the dream. And, 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 and that's, like I said, one off, but the well, weirdest it, thing that ever happened to me, it was a one off, but it wasn't now, by the way, your wife also verified. Then didn't you point that out to the neck out? To yeah. Her? Yeah, I did. I did. And she, she well, she's, she, <laughs> she, yeah. um, she, she doesn't believe in this stuff. And so she said that you must have somehow, you know, but I said, but check it out because I, I had to take a picture of it with my phone because really difficult to get it. But it was very, you know, it just looked too close to the, what the real thing would look like for me to just brush it off as, as, as something that, I did to myself in in my sleep. No. I, I I still fear. I still if just talking about it now. I still feel it's weird. I, I there was something strange about that whole thing. Well, from my perspective, from what that was was your dad. When he got to the other side, he realized and was and part of his growth process was that he left things incomplete with you. And uh, he didn't want it to stay un incomplete because it would affect you while you're still here. Yeah, and, probably. And so he wanted to touch bases on it and uh, um, just just because he wanted closure and he wanted to give you closure. Now, this is my friend, uh, Kayla May. Let's see what she has to say. It was a real visit from your father. He knew you felt awful about not saying goodbye, so he worked his magic to come and fix the wrong. You're also an empath, so maybe reading up on it will help settle your mind with your abilities. So, yeah. And I, you know, in, 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 my, in my humble opinion, I think that most really good songwriters are, they're picking a lot of stuff up from elsewhere, and they are an empath. And, uh, and because there are things that you write that you didn't know you were going to write, and then all of a sudden it shows up. Um, yeah, it's the weirdest thing about songwriting. I've always considered it kind of like magic because, you know, all at one point there's nothing on, on a piece of paper or a song right. doesn't exist, and it's kind of like pulling a rabbit out of your hat. Then, And even with songs, I, it's weird, though, because I've, I've – gone on record saying that i write a song a day uh and i do not all of them are good but it's weird because the ones that are very very good i always felt that they were given to me this yeah. is this is another thing i can't really explain it, it this is it's because when i <clears throat> for example when i wrote hearts on fire or um or doormat it it, it it's almost like these songs the ones that aren't given to you kind of work very hard at and then at the end of the day you're not that you, you know you're not crazy about the tune it's kind of weird but then sometimes you get this sense that oh i got you gotta get my guitar and usually it's that it, it's not even a convenient time but the song that you write just you write it real quick even even as if it's already been written you see this is the weird thing you know it, it it's almost like it's already been written and and it's just you're just an instrument. And, and, I and, I, yeah, I believe that. And, and and so I always felt that, you know, I've gone, I've, I've said once before somewhere that, you know, that those are the songs that God writes, the rest of the crap is mine, you know? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> um, <clears throat> but but yeah, that's another that's another weird feeling because it writing a song that's actually very very good and it's always easy. It's always it comes easily. It, it's you know where to go. Whereas then with most of the tracks, you just have no idea. And and because it's easy, don't you feel at the end of writing it, it's a little bit of therapy. It's like it's therapeutic. Absolutely. Yeah, and, it is. It is. Um, you know, I should probably sit down more, and I don't know why. Yeah, I should sit down. I should sit down, pick up my guitar, and write a happy song. You know, when I'm really, really happy and and just incredibly psyched about stuff. But for some reason the way the therapy works for me is that, you know, I, I go through a, a rough patch or I'm going through a rough patch or, uh, you know, just something that really saddens or upsets me. And then I sit down and then I write, and then it's almost like it's given, you know, those songs are given to me as consolation prizes in a way that, <laughs> you know, that you lost in life. Now, you know, this thing was taken away from you or somebody treated you real shitty. So I probably shouldn't use that word, but no, um, you're you're good. Um, and then somebody says that, but look, I know you're down in the dumps, but here's hearts on fire. You get to sing it, you know, and that. so it, uh, for me, I might be wrong, but <clears throat> I really feels like that. No, you know, I don't think you're wrong at all. I think, I think that what a couple a couple things, I think the other side is comforting you at the same time that you're writing the song, they're bringing that to you to make you feel better. Because they they recognize that that it's been hurtful, whatever whatever it yeah. was, you know. And and a lot of and I, in a lot of your songs and your music music is about relationships and uh, and when they fail, sure. and yeah. Fail. And uh, because because they a lot of relationships do fail. No Sadly, can, they do. Yeah, you know. And uh, and but but like hearts on fire. I I had that up and I got to put it up again because I I listened to that song. And there's also the other one that I really, I really love. Um, was yeah. it Doormat? Yeah, it might have been. Might have been. Yeah, it's the bluesy one. Yes. And uh, I would listen to those before I did a podcast. And what they did for me was they lightened my mood, whatever mood I happened to be in. Cool. And made okay, it then I've, I've managed to do something that I've always wanted to do with music then. I just... It's, 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 it's cool the way that... They, because it makes... It uplifts my soul. And so I, it, it really does, Tommy. And Thanks, I, man. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate what you do. Um, as a matter of fact, we appreciate it so much. We should probably say play something, don't you think? Yeah. Is this the moment where we're gonna listen this, to by twenty twenty two? All right. Tell it to you. This would be the moment because we're already, you know, we're already thirty minutes in, and it's it's amazing oh, right. how time flies when when I'm having fun talking to you. But uh, um, so let's. Let's talk about 2022. Well, yeah, I, I've, you know, I've never written a song um, to the new year or, and, or, or a new year's track. It, I'm not, you know, I have that one Christmas tune that I wrote ages ago and I put it out last year. Um, and, and then somebody was asking, just do another Christmas tune. And I'm like, no, they can only be one for, you know, rock art. It's just, that's it. That's it. That's your contribution because you don't want to, you know, it, it's kind of like a little bit cheesy to go back every year. And here's a new Christmas tune and here's a new Halloween tune. And, you know, it's a Thanksgiving tune called, you know, Turkey. And, um, and so I wrote, wrote a song. I thought it'd be kind of cool to, to, dress the song up as a relationship song, but really be singing to the year 2022, you know, just kind of like you felt, you feel that, or you felt that maybe 2021 wasn't all that you thought it might be. And you're, you know, kind of saying to 2022 that, you know, not just that please be better, but like, you know, I don't trust you that you're claiming that you're better, but you know, I, maybe you're not, I got to take a step back here. Cause I'm not sure that, you know, I'm going down the right road, and and so it, so it. That's really what the song is about. It it just really isn't about anything else. It's just me serenading to 2022. <laughs> well, you know, we're hopeful. We're hopeful that 2022 is going to be better than uh, 20 was and 21 was. Well, isn't that the great thing about New Year? Uh, New Year's, in in a way, you kind of wrap up the old one, and you have a clean slate. Yep. And regardless of what's happened. 
you just like you know full of 2022 would be or whatever year be you know the new year's full of possibilities um and you have no idea what's going to happen sometimes of course awful things are going to happen but we tend to think that you know oh man you know new year is going to be great and so that's part of the song too yeah it's like it's like the beginning of uh baseball season or the beginning of football season you know, the... <laughs> anything's possible yeah yeah right eternal optimist we're gonna do great this year and then they screw up and then it's the end of that and but it's it's like the, the new year that's and that's why health clubs always do really well in january by the time <laughs> everybody joins because they're gonna do so in the, 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 the and the yeah come mid-february valentine's day <laughs> you get you know boxes of chocolate you know i just it it's it's over yeah it's it's weird it's weird it's the same thing isn't it yeah absolutely and by the way this song is being released on uh, in uh about five days six days yeah yeah december 3rd yeah december 3rd so so it'll be on it'll be everywhere on uh, december 3rd but he's gonna let us play it prior to because we're cool and then he's really absolutely man it really is dynamite that you that you come and and talk to me because it's it really is a lot of fun and and so my pleasure's all mine so we're gonna play this one right now and i mean i'm gonna come to finland to see you i think hey and, uh, dude yeah that's cool absolutely so this is tommy tika and the name of the song is by 2022 
that is Tom Tika and uh, by 2022. I love that song. I love how you put everything, the the melody together and the middle eights are, uh, I'm learning all this stuff from you, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. You know, I, I, it's, it's one of, it's one of my better ones. I think, you know, it, it, that really uh, listening to it now, I haven't for a while. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good track. It's going to do well. It's well, I'm hoping do... so. Yeah. I'm hoping yeah. so. Now, these days, and I'm really not sure, but when you release, when you set a release date, where does it get released to? Is that when it hits Spotify and all that stuff? Yeah, all the streaming platforms. That's how it works. You know, it's kind of weird because in the olden times, we'd be thinking in terms of stores. Right. You know, Tower Records would put it up, right? Oh, yeah. But, I mean, that, think <laughs> about it. And I just, they're all gone. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so So now it's it's all the online stuff and and... And you hope to be able to make a little bit of money from it, maybe. I'm always hoping, you know, and, and I, I do make a little bit, but, you know, I want to stress the word little. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you've had, you've had like uh, top of the charts and you've done, you've done really well. Your, your music is, is awesome. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't figured that out yet, he does all the vocals, all the instruments, all the writing um, and produces it. He's got a producer that works with him, but he does most of all of this stuff from the upstairs, upstairs of your house, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, right. Yeah, it's good. It's a amazing. Small studio there. Yeah. yeah. It's well, amazing. thanks. I, yeah, it, it's a nice way to record when when you've got, you know, six kids in your family, man, and and you just kind of, you know, disappear upstairs. Uh, every once in a while to make music or usually I do it actually after the kids have gone to bed because it's pretty soundproof here. And um, that way I really doesn't take time away from my family. That's awesome. And and I still get stuff done. Exactly. Now, now, do you make enough to, uh, are you kind of semi-retired? Do you have another, uh, do you have to have a day job or can you make enough? I'm set. I'm set. I'm semi-retired. Yeah. I, so I got to have a day job. I think you know if 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 I were to tour and really take this up again, it'd be fine. Uh, but perhaps not not enough to provide you know for six children because you know if the younger one's four right now and the oldest one is eighteen, the amount of years that you need to have a steady income and the insurances and everything. It just doesn't really fit into the life of a musician unless you're Steven Tyler. You know, it but whose it, music it, I love. I absolutely love. Um <clears throat> but yeah, maybe that answers your question. <laughs> I don't know. But, but even so, um if you are a traveling musician, you got six kids at home, you can't do both at the same time. Um That's right. unless you're like Paul McCartney and you have your own jet. And so you can go. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 yeah, they did it with style, didn't they? Yeah, they, they did. <laughs> but if you, so if you can do it that, but how many of them are there? Uh, there's only one of him. So yeah. So it, it, but to be a uh, to to be playing three or four gigs a week, and to be moving your stuff and on and that would be an, logistically it'd be a nightmare. But it also yeah. be, you wouldn't be able to. Your four year old would. Uh, you'd have to introduce yourself to him every time you came home. Yeah. And and hence just just doing this from home and releasing it, um, it, one has to be. And you know, I really did get to experience all that when I was younger, dude. Right. So I don't. You also, you know, it's it's like, yeah, I think that I I do have my priorities straight. But I also want to point out that in my case, I've I've lived through that, and it's not anything that I want to repeat. You know, it, it was great, and there are moments that I really miss. But even those moments, you know, pale in comparison to the time that I spend with my family. I've always been, I, I come from a very close family myself. And so, it, you know, that's really who I am first and foremost, a husband and a father. And anybody, you know, people say these things all the time, and then whatever the truth is. But if you talk to, if if, if just randomly talk to my wife or anybody who knows me, they they'd actually say the same thing. Well, that's because you got your priorities straight. And, yeah, I suppose. You know, well, but they, you know, the, and <laughs> when you and your brother were out and you were touring and mm. you were doing, doing all that, and and you were, you know, 
Uh, you're a good looking man, so I imagine you didn't have any hey, thanks, getting getting company. Uh, to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and I've ne and that was never a, never a problem. But then again, you know, um, when you're young, you know, I, it, the whole scene is so different, you know. Yeah. And and when you're playing guitar up on stage, but you know, the just if anybody's listening, you know, it just one thing that usually doesn't get mentioned is that um, you do get a lot of attention, but usually it's from the people that you don't want the attention from. It, you know, I think you can make it sound very sexy and, you know, just appear like, <clears throat> you know, this super cool, <laughs> you know, mm. rock star. But reality of the situation is that a lot of people that then who are in the U, um, then perhaps aren't really either the people that you should be hanging out with or just maybe they're just people you're not that interested in. So, so you know, it, it just... <laughs> It's a sad fact, but of course, when you're on the road or when you're in the studio and when you're doing all these things, um, it's a different life. Which part you, you like the um, the writing of the song and and putting them together? That's that's really what you enjoy doing, right? Yeah, that's I, I enjoy the studio. I always have. I I, I there are people who um, much prefer playing live. I think it's it's. I, I I do too. Don't get me, you know, I don't, because it's such a magical moment, the interaction and, and just, you know, having, for example, an audience who knows your songs and, and, um, and, and, it, and it's that there's something very disarming about that. And, 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 and thank God for them because otherwise you wouldn't be anything. Right. It, really, truly. It, it, you know, and, um, but yeah, my, my preference has always been to record and just to hone my craft. Um, and so that's you know that's where I'm I'm the happiest anyway, uh, writing and recording. You do an awesome job at all of that, and uh, it's you know like we were saying, I I truly believe that uh, you have a gift that um, somebody gave it to you from maybe it was your grandmother because you have a little bit of that uh, that uh, psychic gift yourself because you're <laughs> you know if it was her then you know thanks it's because. Um, with that also came the ability to enjoy music and and obviously i was uh i like all kinds of music uh, classical you know and then then today i was listening to merle haggard you know because i love country country as well uh very selectively i think he's one of one of the uh, he he's the best country artist uh, he's the beatles of country music um and and this will this is, is going to be very clear to anybody who listens to, for example, the album, It's All in the Movies. And you hear the strings and the jazz influ influence. And I don't, but anyway, long story short, um, I love music, period. You know, I just love listening to it ever since I was a young kid. And so I think, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's a wonderful, it's been a wonderful gift. It really has. It, you know, it's, what's what's really cool about what you do and what a lot of people that I tell, get to talk to do um, and, and the shows that I'm able to put together are that we have the ability, you and I sitting here, have the ability to impact somebody's life who will never meet. You do that with your music all the time. You, you'll, you People buy your songs, they listen to them, they take them to heart. You'll never meet them, but they have an impact on on their life and that's why you're here is to have a positive impact on people's lives that's why you yeah you're right you know one of the <clears throat> i got an email um i, I want i don't want to lie feels like a year ago but in reality it was probably in the spring and um <clears throat> this uh um this 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 uh this woman who just got married um sent me sent me a picture of uh you know, a wedding photo. And I said that uh, they were dancing to the impersonators, or you are the one, which I thought was super cool because I, I just really never thought that anybody would, you know, get married and just play one of my songs. And I, I, I you know, I felt really honored by that. Yeah. And, and the fact that, you know, they got so much out of something that I wrote in my living room that, <laughs> That, that you know, it, it, it's really great. It felt very rewarding. 
Well, and and there are, I, I'm convinced that uh, that on, I'm, forgive me, but on the other side, that they are the music is a great big part of what happens over there, and I think that they they are giving us the gift, and they're giving us people with the gift to be able to translate what they're doing up there to bring it down here and and to give us a taste of it. And, well, I uh, love that thought. I love that thought. Yeah. The, the type of music that you do um, and, and really uh, uh, most, most artists, there's a certain group that I'm not real fond of if, if they use a lot of negatives and about, about hate and, and kill and uh, anyway, mm. but you know, the, the positive guys like you, 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 uh, you really have an impact on, on people's lives. And I, the, that ladies, she had probably listened to that song well, a couple hundred times. And they thought so much of it that they wanted to have it in their wedding. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it just blew my mind. It was just, you know, what an honor. And, 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 you know, the reason why I keep doing what I'm doing, really, it, you know, if I can just always say that for me, you know, it doesn't matter if the audience is small or big, but if there is an audience that, you know, nods their heads to what I'm doing, then that just, that's all, you know, that's, that's, that's the business for me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I know, and I I get it because well, the same thing kind of happened to me today. Uh, this is kind of a funny story. I told you that last week, and if you are listening to this, if you go back through the archives, you'll catch the uh episode that I did with uh, with the lady who is an advocate for the uh clitoris because she had, (laughs) yeah, 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 she had surgery about this, yeah, yeah, well, she had surgery, and the doctor. She first of all, she felt like her private parts were abnormal looking, and uh, so she okay. wanted to have uh, what they call a uh, labiaplasty, lab, labia, labia. Anyway, they anyway, call it, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, I don't have one, so I don't pronounce. Yeah, it. Yeah, I was just gonna say that you know, while you appreciate one, you really don't know what she was talking about, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, but I get a um, um, comment today saying thanks i needed that because she just listened to that episode i wasn't sure what she got out of it but um the part of it the, there you go yeah, yeah. You, that's you, it you, isn't it yeah that's and that's the whole reason to do it's the whole reason why having you on is important um um i'll have you on i could have you have you on every month and it would be or every every week you want to co-host with me come on we'll do this yeah uh, hey w- we should do it because i mean man i love talking to you I was I, I told you in the summer, remember that one time we did this. I said at the end of the episode that you and I just sort of have have the stream yard. We don't even have to broadcast it anywhere. Just have a couple of beers while we're talking and it'll be great. And so yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna say no, man. I mean if you if it what whatever you throw my way and I get a chance to chat with you, I'll um you can come me in. Uh you you bet well as a matter of fact I've got uh like seven of your songs are like the one that we just played uh, by 2022 and I've got them and I'm going to line them up and just, and just play it. Cause I the, the technology that I have now, I can just line up stuff and just play it on an ongoing basis. So I'm going to, I've got like six or seven or eight songs that are all, all video and, uh, um, and I'm just going to play them back to back to back to back to back to back. If that's all right with you. Yeah. That sounds great, man. I got to tell you, I, I got to tell you something funny that happened to me. A few days ago because christmas is coming i mean yeah. we all know this and children write to santa claus you know yeah, we've yeah. got those letters and my boys have you know the two younger ones especially the four-year-old has gotten it into his head that rather than write because he really doesn't know how to write yet um he can just take these uh catalogs that they send home every christmas you know filled with toys and stuff uh-huh. and, and circle everything that he wants <laughs> And he, you know, he started doing that at first. He said that, look, dad, you know, I just, I think we're going to have to get rid of some of the older stuff because, <laughs> you know, it's like every page, like he thought he was getting all the toys. And I said that, you know, you're not, not going to get everything that sent is going to take a look at the uh, catalog and, and, and uh, probably try to figure out uh, with his helpers that, you know, if you need something more than one toy, more than another and all that stuff. And then I, you know, flipped over a couple of pages and there was a little girl playing with dolls and the dolls have not, had not been circled, but the little girl was circled. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, boy. <laughs> exactly. No, this dude, man, he's he's four, but he's already like smiling to you know women, older older women, you know, and uh, women in their twenties, and he can wander over and say that hi. I'm Henry, you know, because I've had this happen. We've gone to the store, you know, maybe there's a cute, cute girl working at the register and, and Henry's with me and, and, you know, he's, he's four, mind you, four and a half, as he says. And he walks, he, he, you know, this one particular girl, he walked, he walked up to her, just like went round the register and she's like, like, what's happening? And Henry's right in front of her and she's, and he's saying, hi, what's your name? I'm Henry. You know, and I'm like, that's yeah. I said, I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, I, you know, and 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 you know, she she, she kind of looked at him and said, "That Henry, you're real cute." And Henry looked at her and said, "I am, aren't I?" You know, <laughs> it's, he's he's impossible. So anyway, he circles this little girl, and I says, I, I said to her, so I had said to him that you know, it. I'm sure that you know, it, we can't. Santa can't bring people that they would suffocate in the box, right? Because you wrap, right? It could no dogs, no people, nothing that breathes. And it's, I said, also, it's very in, inappropriate um, to ask for a little girl, you know. And Henry looked at me and said, Why? I quite like her. And I'm like, Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's how it works, you know. Uh, Dan, um, you got a problem brewing there. I'm telling yeah. you, yeah, is um, he's, he's gonna be a great uh, ladies' man. No, uh, that's. That's that's what I, I I told my wife. I said that you really gotta keep an eye on this one, you know. Yeah, well, fortunately, in your world, he he won't be bringing anything home. If you right. had, if you had six girls from eighteen. Oh, good lord! Four, I don't know how people survive that. I don't either. I I just this idea of being a guy yourself, and you know what I'm talking about. Oh, well, absolutely! I remember what when I was eighteen or seventeen or sixteen, and was what I was in, interested in with the girls I was dating and stuff. Yeah, I mean, just as a father, I you know, if any anybody's listening to this out there, has got like all girls. I'm just you know, my heart goes out, you know, for you. I, I don't know how I'd, how I'd react to be honest with you. <laughs> I can't even say the words, you know. I just like blushing here, thinking like you know, just like with a shotgun, you know, I just. Yep, and and then and then the the girls th at that age they seem to think they know everything. And oh they, yeah, and then they don't listen to dad. Oh dad, you know that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, you have such a narrow, <laughs> you know. And, and yeah, then, but by the way, your eighteen year olds, your eighteen year old, when yeah, you get thirty, he'll think you're pretty smart again. Oh yeah, I because that's I noticed that happened to me. Yeah. You know, I just actually, I, I, I told, I uh, told my brother, I said that, remember when dad was always saying that don't do what I've done, just do what I say, you know, and, 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 and he'd always be saying like, you know, that's not how it's going to work out at all, Tom. It's just, please just listen to me, you know, and, and, and I'd be thinking what a bitter old man, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and, and right about now, what I'm, what I feel, I, I feel like, you know, he was actually hundred percent right. 95 percent of the time yeah and but the see the thing is this it'd be so easy if i could just walk my 18 year old is like 20 meters from me from me now if i could just walk up to his room and say that look here's here's what a relationship is like here's what marriage is like this is the nitty-gritty of it do you want it you know and and he would then look at me and say that you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> I'm not going to have a marriage like that. And then you're going to say, everybody's going to have a marriage like that. It's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. You'd fight, right? And oh, yeah. then in 20, 20 years, you're thinking like, didn't dad talk about this? <laughs> Man. That old dude was smarter than I thought he was. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to ask you, with your six kids, when you go upstairs and you produce this type of music and, and stuff, do they do they – think of you as more than dad or or will you always just be dad that likes to play um and and write music i i think that i'm just gonna be dad who basically pesters them with music uh, you know it, it, it in my house it's kind of like um it, it i i played one of the new tunes to my six-year-old and, and he was listening to it and you know a while back a while back and he said that that's not very good is it I'm sorry, Dad. You know, and 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 I think this tune was doormat. Actually, 
you know, oh. and, and yeah, it was like, that's not very good, is it? And I'm like, um, really? I was, yeah, I, I didn't quite like that. Can we put Ghostbusters on? You know, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll put Ghostbusters on. <clears throat> and so I don't, you know, I, to them, I'm dad. I'm this lame guy, you know, or, 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 you know, guy who maybe doesn't cook fast enough for them when they're hungry you know? and and so so for them i think the older one is actually listening to my 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 um my old albums with carmen gray and and so, you know he's he's kind of exploring he's he's asking questions and reading some of the old interviews that i've done some of the new ones and he's like oh yeah you actually uh you've done a lot he said one day i said okay. yeah you know i've written a few songs <laughs> and, and 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 so you know He's kind of catching on, um, but even to him, I'm just, you know. And these kids, the stuff they listen to these days, it's mostly rap anyway, you know. And, um, and you know, just what are you going to do? You ask, I was just going to say that. What are you going to do? Because uh, yeah. yeah, I I can't I can't even listen. I can't listen to rap. My as a matter of fact, my my youngest son. He listens to music. Remember, I don't know if they even still do it because he's he's, you know, thirty and he's he's uh, um, in uh, uh, Japan right now. But the the ones where they have that, that oh yeah 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 whatever that is, I I don't even know that that was ever a genre, but he was he would listen to that um, incessantly, <laughs> and it was like I'm sorry, just the idea of you know. Coming home Friday, just really tired, pouring a glass of beer, and then you're like, you know, and 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 feeling like you know, I just okay, I'm going back to the bar. You know? <laughs> one, I, one, one time I was I was driving and uh, I didn't know he was near me, but I hear this song and it was, and it turned out to be him, and he and he was playing it real loud. It's like that stuff just sucks, and and of course those kids. Yeah. You worry about them because the, their vocal cords are going to be gone by the time they're twenty. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it. I, I, you know, I. May, maybe it's uh, that every, you know I'm limited that way, but that was never my bag, no. if you know what I mean. And but and then again, I think you know, in music that you're not really that tuned uh, or into it. It just every once in a while, I, I mean, I do. I'm sort of forced to listen to rap in the car every once. So like whenever I have all the kids there, I just one rap song after another some of them are good um but mostly it's got they introduce them to me like oh this one's really different and i'm like it's rap you know to me it's but i'm sure that's the way they feel about you know yeah. i i because because i um you know somebody was somebody was saying uh, i did some interview or one interview a couple of months ago where we talked about the possibility of uh rock and roll making a comeback but I don't see it ever happening. People are, people are, um, you know, one thing I say about rap though, is that we shouldn't just be attacking rap based on the fact that it it's less complex than, for example, what the Beatles did or David Bowie did, because there's a lot of re repetitive rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And if you think about country music, I mean, it's three chords over and over again. Somebody lost their dog, their house burned down and the wife left. It, it it just my point being that rap isn't the only genre that's incredibly similar from one song to another. You know, one one of the standard jokes that I use is because for a period of time, uh, I my life was like a bad country music song. And every, <laughs> I've been there too. Hey, everybody gets that joke because that's when you think of, of country, you think of my dog died, my dad died, I lost my house, my wife divorced me, you know, and all that kind of it, that's but that's you know because it is is that way. But I'll tell you what, can you name me a rap song from five years ago or beyond that you remember? No, no, I can't. I, but I can't think of one either. But I mean, it's let's face it, it it's not that's not our genre though. No, I but mean, they, if if, it, if we, are, yeah, go ahead. If we were totally into rap, we'd be able to do it. But I don't think it has staying power. That's 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 my point. Yeah. So and I don't need. I don't either, but I've been wrong before, so I know I'm 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 uh, I'm taking more of your time than I should again, Tommy. But uh, uh, 
you burn me real slow. That sounds like <laughs> sounds like a, a a song that you burn me real slow is a painful song. Yeah, it's one of those relationship songs that we spoke about again. You know, because people get in, get into these situations, and I don't think it's always. You know, one of the things that I dislike about um lot of the blues songs or like and dislike is that they're very one-sided uh it's somebody saying that you know there's a demon woman and they're making my life a misery basically that's that's the blues isn't it yeah. but in reality i think that nobody is ever forced to stay in a relationship that they don't want to stay in I, it's more complex than that and i think um you always most of us enter these relationships with the best of intentions i mean nobody walks down the aisle and thinks that things you know that you know we're gonna do this for a couple of years then i'm gonna go off to japan right you right. know and and so so you burn me real slow is 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 you know i think it was john lennon who once said that no relationship ends because of lack of the lack of love it's just that usually one loves more than the other, you know? <laughs> and You Burn Me Real Slow is a song like that. It's, just, it's about a guy who's just crazy about this girl um, who's just not that into him. And being unable to, you know, call it quits, he just kind of keeps going, trying to, win her over even though she's you know obviously dating other guys and um so in a way really you can blame the girl but truth of the matter is that the protagonist is putting himself in an impossible situation a situation where he should just you know maybe turn his attention elsewhere you know i think and, i think everybody I, I know that i've been in that situation where yeah well, maybe, maybe she'll just, if I do this, <laughs> it'll turn her around and, yeah. she'll, you know, or if I, if I buy her this, or if I take her here, or, or if I go kill the other guy. <laughs> but <no>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, you know, it, but you know, it, it'd be great if relationships work like that, but there's this thing called chemistry and, you know, while you might have it, or you think that you have it with someone, then if. You know, if they don't have it with you, it's it's a it's a one way street, and um, well, that's the that's the negative side, you know, of relationships. The positive being, of course, that then when you true truly find that one that that you know both of you feel the same way, then then it's great. But but to be able to find that person, obviously, we do need to go through these "you burn me real slow" relationships. Absolutely. You know, it just makes sure that we're not burnt to the to crust. You know, <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. You know, you, you know, my my high school sweetheart from a hundred million years ago. I always thought that we'd get married and be very happy. And the older I've gotten, the more I realize she had one fatal flaw. And What's that, that? One, that child could not be on time. For, she's going to be late to her own funeral. Uh, <laughs> she could not stand. She could not be on time. And that as i've gotten older has become my number one pet peeve if you cannot be on time where i worked as a bus driver if you were 59 seconds late you lost your shift you got written up and three of those and you got fired so it's you know i you got to be on time and stuff like that but she was always late it, it i would have killed her eventually so that would <laughs> But also, yeah, but I mean, I mean, you know, in, incompatibility. And these are yeah. so important. You, when you're growing up and you're in your teens and you, you're a kid, you don't understand. You just, you know, you, you go somewhere, you think, oh, she looks good. She'll yeah. be my wife. You know, yeah. and nowadays when I even think about the word wife, what it entails for me, you know, it, 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 it ah, you know, I, there's two words that I don't use lightly, you know, or it just mom is one. You know, because that 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 that's and and wife is the other. They're kind of like sacred words, and and to take those words and try to force them on somebody who really lots of times really don't deserve them. You know, from your perspective, of course, they might you know then meet somebody else and there's chemistry and compatibility, but you know those words, it they're big words, and and whenever you make somebody your wife, I think. If you're smart enough, which young people, young guys normally aren't, then there are so many things that have to just kind of yeah. be, you know, just perfect in a way. 
Robin Williams had the best line that uh, I've ever heard about the state of being a young man. And, and that is that um, God gave us two heads, but only blood enough to run one at a time. Yeah, and that's it. That's so, it. Hey, we've, you know, that that's it. So it's basically like a blood man. You know? It is. So we, we, get, we get excited about uh, a pretty gal and we, we can overlook, we can overlook damn near anything. If, if she's pretty for enough. a while for a while and then it gets old and then we move on but i mean this is it's you know i uh, i i wish i could change that but that's evolution i you know it, it's the way world has worked for a long time tom tick is not going to be able to do anything about that so i write these songs instead you know <laughs> <laughs> which is great so i uh, you know i'm we i've kept you long enough i'm not going to make you uh sit here any longer because you've got kids and uh, I got to go back. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's time for uh, what time is it there? Oh, it's past 10. Oh, you got to put kids to bed and all that kind of stuff. So absolutely. It's been great to see you again. I'm going to play that song on our way out. But it's it's in uh, uh, in January. No, oh, I, damn it. There's always something you're, you're doing a compilation album with other artists. That's coming yeah. out in January. Yeah, that's can right. You, can At least track is that? Well, I really, you know, it was one of those things that came through the label, and and there's a couple of big names like like you know Guns and Roses and so forth, and my songs among those. So, yeah, I oh. don't know, yeah, I don't know how Michael Michael was able to swing it, but luckily he, he was, and luckily also the the song got accepted on the album, um, which which is sort of a very cool thing. So, which song? You burned me real slow. Awesome. That's what we're going to play right now. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, Tom, thank you very much. Can you, will you come back in January when that I, I definitely will, man. Just send me an email. Uh, I'll be here. Or you, you got here, it. you know, in cyberspace. Yeah. You know, when, right. we, when we get to the point where it's close to being released, I want to, I want to highlight that. Uh, okay. okay. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Tom Teak has been our guest. If you want to, if you want to go see his, or hear his music, Where's the best place for them to go hear your music? It's all on Spotify and App iMusic or Apple Music. Um, I think those are the best places. Um, and you know the videos are on YouTube, music videos. Um, but yeah, Sp Spotify is probably the best place. That's yeah. that's you know. Do you do you sell CDs from your? Do you have a website that you sell CDs from? I have stuff? a website, and I've wondered if I should put the CDs on sale there, but uh, haven't yet. Ah, well, when you get around to doing that, let me know, and we'll and we'll because uh, that's that's a great way for you to keep more of the profits. You need to, <laughs> True. Yeah, would be would be very helpful. So, Tom Teak has been our guest, and uh, I want to thank you again. It's I at least goes so fast. And Too fast, man. Thanks for having me on the show. I really, it's always a treat. And tell your kids they got a hell of a dad. <laughs> we'll do. You know, <laughs> they'll probably go like, well, somebody should talk to Kevin. <laughs> now, when when they when they get all grown up, they'll look back and go, he was right. Damn, he was smarter than I thought. He gave him credit for. So, hey, I'll drink to that because I know that part will be true. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day and enjoy enjoy the rest of your night, young man. Yeah, you too, man. See ya. And this is and this is burn me. You burn me real slow. slow. That's right. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you next time. See ya. your lines. I know your stories. You want to hear mine. I'm getting tired. You going out. All made up. Looking just right. It's time to go, go, go. Feel the low, low, low. You burn me. You burn me. Real slow. I saw him with ya. Late last night. I tried to call you, but I got a 
Hey, and thanks for listening to this episode all the way to the end. Hey, pretty cool. Hey, don't forget to follow us so you can receive regular updates and new posts. And remember, take care of each other because each other is all we've got. See you next time on My Independence Report.